think of a hare and hounds. But instead of the hare, you've got someone laying a trail of flour. And instead of the hounds, you've got a bunch of fit-looking people in running trainers. You've got hashing. And along with my dog Zeb, I'm going to be giving it a go today. Prepare to go, look at look for your trail. <laughs> we're going to be out for about an hour. The thing about hashing is that they, when they lay a trail, they lay false trail. So you might think it's that way, but actually it's a blind alley. So you think it's definitely this way? Well, I'm accustomed to the ride. Oh, maybe I'm a kissing gate. This is a kissing gate. Oh. <laughs> this is mad. Yeah. I haven't seen any flowers for ages. Oh, let's just have this one there. Back in the 30s, the late 30s, about 1938, they started hashing at the Royal Selanga Club and so they went out every Monday to train for the next weekend's sport. But of course, back at the club, they always had a beer and a curry after their sport. As you and do. the curry, being a British club, was not very good. It was an all-in stew, this curry, or a hash. And so this posh club became known as the Hash House and we became the Hash House Harriers. Right, now my feet are really wet and they're making a squelching noise. The funny thing for me about hashing is that I'm actually sort of reasonably fit, but my producer isn't fit at all and he's having to run the whole hash with me. <laughs> well, we're not quite last. I think there are two behind us. It's been great fun though. I don't know how many miles we've done and it's pretty much dark. But uh, it's been really cool and the best thing is that the pub over there is where we end up. It's the final stop on the hash 